I'm reading today from I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, and the reason I picked this title was because I had the opportunity to live in Magnolia, Arkansas for some time, which was 18 miles away from Stamps, Arkansas, where um, the author of this book talks about her upbringing and her childhood. I'm starting on page six. When I was three and Bailey four, we had arrived in the musty little town wearing tags on our wrists, which instructed, to whom it may concern, that we were Marguerite and Bailey Johnson Jr. from Long Beach, California, en route to Stamps, Arkansas, care of Mrs. Annie Henderson. Our parents had decided to put an end to their calamitous marriage and father shipped us home to his mother. A porter had been charged with our welfare. He got off the train the next day in Arizona and our tickets were pinned to my brother's inside coat pocket. I don't remember much of the trip, but after we reached the segregated southern part of the journey, things must have looked up. Negro passengers who always traveled with loaded lunch boxes felt sorry for the poor little motherless darlings and plied us with cold fried chicken and potato salad. We lived with our grandmother and uncle in the rear of the store. It was always spoken of with a capital S, which she had owned for, for some 25 years. Until I was 13 and left Arkansas for good, the store was my favorite place to be. Alone and empty in the mornings, it looked like an unopened present from a stranger. Opening the front doors was pulling the ribbon off the unexpected gift. The light would come in softly, we faced north, easing itself over the shelves of mackerel, salmon, tobacco, thread. It fell flat on the big vat of lard and by noontime during the summer, the grease had softened to a thick soup. Whenever I walked into the store in the afternoon, I sensed that it was tired. I alone could hear the slow pulse of its job half done. But just before bedtime, after numerous people had walked in and out, had argued over their bills, or joked about their neighbors, or just dropped in to give Sister Henderson a hi, y'all, the promise of magic mornings returned to the store and spread itself over the family and washed life waves. Mama opened boxes of crispy crackers, and we sat around the meat block at the rear of the store. I sliced onions and Bailey opened two or even three cans of sardines and allowed their juice of oil and fishing boats to ooze down and around the sides. That was supper. In the evening, when we were alone like that, Uncle Willie didn't stutter or shake or give any indication that he had an affliction. It seemed that the peace of a day's ending was an assurance that the covenant God made with children, Negroes, and the crippled was still in effect. <laughs>